Okay, in the last video I was dealing with combinations. And now I'm going to move on to the permutations part. And these words should not scare you as long as you know what they mean and when to use them. So let's say I have here a podium, which is for the first place winner. And here I have a lower podium, which is for the second place winner. And then, of course, the third place, the bronze medal person, has the lowest podium. So I have a total of six athletes. And I'm wondering, how many different ways can we have a first, second, and third place finisher? Well, in the very first dash here, we have a total of six athletes, so six different people can get first place. Because there's one person fewer now, because we've already put one person up here, there are only five possible people that go second place, and then finally four people that can go in third place. What I do is I call this the dash method. You notice that these are podiums and are kind of misaligned, but by using the dash, dash method, I just put dashes next to each other like this. There's six, five in this dash, four in this dash, and then we just always multiply those dashes together. Six times five is 30 times four is 120. So if this were the, if this were the problem, six athletes, how many ways can I choose them to sit on the first, second, third place podium? then the answer would simply be 120. Now you may say, oh, that's great, but had I shown you the old way of saying P, N, R, setting up this really long formula that you worked so hard to shove into your brain, if I had done this and solved it, it would have taken me one step, two step, three step, four step, it would have taken me a lot longer. So we want to ignore this formula. I'm not even going to deign to write it down because it's confusing. This, however, is intuitive, and that's the important part. Now, the real trick here, though, is when do I use permutations and when do I use combinations? And that's always something that can be tricky. And, of course, the GRE knows that, and they try to trick you wherever they can. So let's try another problem. And if you're at home, maybe you can press the pause button and think about it. But let's say we have 10 students, a lot of students. And I want 10 students to sit in four chairs. So we have four chairs. One, two, three, four. How many ways can I have these students, these 10 students, sit in these four different chairs? Well, this is chair one, this is chair two, this is chair three, this is chair four. And maybe I will call it A, B, C, and D just so we don't get mixed up with the numbers above, but we simply have four chairs. Now it's important because the way that they sit in the chairs differ, meaning if Bob sits over here in the first chair, it's different from Bob sitting over here. So each place is unique or order matters. Now, how many people can sit here in chair A? Well, we have 10 students, so we have 10. In chair B, we have nine. In chair C, we have eight. In chair D, we have seven. The order matters, so it's important that we have people in a specific chair. So we now do what? Well, we do what we did here. 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. It's the dashing method. And if you notice, what we did with the chairs, with the students here, is exactly the same as we did with the athletes, because it's important. Order matters. Where you're sitting, if you're standing, if you're a first place person, it's very different from being a third place person. So when order matters, you are dealing with permutations. Now, what are then combinations? Combinations where order doesn't matter. Let's just say you have these four chairs. It doesn't matter where a student sits. So these four chairs up here comprise the class. So I'm going to have this four-person class, little classroom, and I'm going to choose from 10. So now I set up my dashes, 10 people, 9 people, 8 people, 7 people. However, because if Bob sits here or if Bob sits here or anywhere, it doesn't really matter. It's the same class of four students. We are now dealing with combinations. And when you're dealing with combinations, you always... Do the exact same you do here with permuta permutations in the numerator, but then in the denominator, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by however many places are in the classroom. In this case, we have four students, four places. I'm going to divide by four factorial, and you should know that four factorial is equal to 24. And now, with this information, I can cancel out the 8. That leaves me with a 3 down here. 3 times 8 is 24. The 3 can cancel by canceling out the 9 here, and there's a 3. And now I have 10 times 3, which is 30. 3 times 7 is 21. Add the 0. So that gives me 210 different ways. And now we are dealing with, in this case, again, the combinations problem. Had I, however, tried to do this combinations problem down here using the old way or even the permutations method, it would have taken me forever. This intuitive way is much faster and you feel in control of the problem. So 
we are going to try it out in the future on some even more difficult permutation combination problems.